Appreciate you joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham coming to you from our studios provided by First Star Logistics as always. And man, I'm excited about this guest because having played in the offensive line for quite a number of years, <laughs> my whole life, football life basically, I really appreciate a guy like Ted Karras who is an unbelievably competitive football player, but a tremendous leader, high football IQ, high character. And uh, he's done such an unbelievable job since he's been here with the Cincinnati Bengals, both on and off the field. And uh, we talk about that aspect of things. He's going to be a father. Uh, little girl, Penelope, going to call her Penny. The due date is any day now. Uh, in fact, she could be uh, already delivered here before we bring this to you. It's kind of crazy. And he talks about fatherhood. Uh, we're also going to talk to him about the, uh, the Cincy Hat St. Taddy's Day event that they had at the, the Foling Warehouse that was a huge success, contributing, as he does, to the community of those in need. And then also we talk about his teammates, his current teammates, veteran free agents uh, that have signed with the Cincinnati Bengals. He gives us a rundown on guys that, uh, that you'll appreciate. I mean, it's a, it's a Ted Karras special, totally honest. And then the NFL draft and 10 draft picks. What's going to be added to the Cincinnati Bengals? He feels really good about the team that's being put together for the 2024 season, and you'll hear all about it. What a great move you made today. Joining us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, coming to you from our awesome studios as usual, because we've got the king of in the trenches. We have the guy that gets it all going in the trenches on an every snap basis for the Cincinnati Bengals. A guy that handles the football every single snap. Center, quarterback, every single snap. That's none other than the great Ted Karras. I uh, appreciate you joining us and uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Dave. Glad to be here. I think this is probably my 10th appearance on in, in the trenches. All right. all right. We're in the double digits. That's awesome. Soon to be daddy. Ted Karras, what, I mean, how much are you looking forward to being a father? I, I, I can't wait. I mean, my wife's been such an all-star through these last nine months. We're coming down to it. I'm predicting Easter Sunday, baby <laughs> girl's coming. Um, I, 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 we're ready. The infrastructure's there, at least. We got the, we got the car seats in the car, <laughs> the crib's ready, the bassinet's ready. Um, and now, now we just have to uh, execute getting baby here. And then our life is has changed forever. But we're we're so excited. It's such a blessing. And you know, I'm I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. You're you're gonna be an unbelievable father. There is nothing like fatherhood. And I've got a daughter. I, you know my daughter Sarah, obviously. Uh, you've done some things with her with Skyline and your events that you're so great with for the community. And father daughter relationships are special. You know, uh mother son relationships are special. I mean, dads with daughters, man. Uh, that's gonna be unbelievable for you. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, Sarah is awesome. And I can't thank Skyline enough. We had an unbelievable time at St. Taddy's Day. And the Greenways are all, always a big hit. St. <laughs> Taddy's Day. We got we to talk about that. Uh, and, and your daughter will be involved, I mean, right away in, in all the events that you're, that you're a part of in the community. And uh, not only a parent, a player, a community leader, you wear a lot of hats. And I like that Cincy hat that you're wearing right there. But how about the Cincy hat? St. Taddy's Day uh, event, uh, about 500 people or close to that were inked, weren't they? I think the final the final count, final audit was uh, 438 people got wow. that, this logo tattooed on them. Unbelievable. The tattoo artist community in this town were so generous. You know, they, they executed it to perfection. I got my first tattoo, thanks to Joey B. <laughs> and, go. you know, we raised a ton of money for the Village of Marici and had a fun time. You know, Cincinnati's such a fun town. I, I'm so grateful to the, to the people, the citizens of this area, because, you know, they come out big time, show out for, for good causes and, and love to have a good time. It, it's, it was an unbelievable event. You know, Skyline was there. We had a ton of great partnerships. And really the ultimate goal is to continue to fund these builds for adults with Down syndrome and autism. And, you know, through these hats, we've been able to do so much. We're going to keep going. We got season three coming up, a lot of exciting stuff 
uh, hat wise and gear wise. So be on the lookout for that. So how did you come up with this idea? How did you come up with this concept? I mean, um, you know, you gave back to people that were given to you and that's, that's what Ted Karras is, is all about having that, that event that you did that was so successful and it sold out right away. Um, how, how did you come up with it? What take us through the, how the, uh, the idea generated to what it generated to. Well, it was through the nationwide charity challenge on Twitter. Um, a lot of people were saying if we won it, that they would get this tattoo. And I thought, you know, if we win it, I'll get anyone who wants to get the tattoo tatted up. And really what St. Taddy's day was, was a, just a big thank you to, to the Cincinnati fan base for all of the support these last two seasons, you really changed, you know, the infrastructure in Indianapolis for, for people with exceptionalities and disabilities. And, you know, we're going to bring some of that to Cincinnati. I'm partnered with Ken Anderson right. uh, and we're, you know, we're working diligently to, you know, identify a property and get some ground broken because there is, you know, very little to no infrastructure in place that's dedicated to these adults with disabilities. And the cool thing about the new building at the village of Marici is that for the first time ever, uh, adults with Down syndrome, autism, you know, the whole spectrum of intellectual disabilities own their own property. They own the condos at, that they live in. So um, not only are they cared for for life, but they're also property owners. And that just even leads more into the independence and the quality of life that we're striving for for these adults. The uh, the event itself is very clever on St. Patrick's Day, so it was St. Taddy's. I, I like it, man. You're a marketing genius. There's no no question about that. And the lines were like unbelievable, waiting patiently to get the tattoos, weren't they? They were, you know, the yeah. I mean, just even to general admission to get in. So we had a lot of fun right. stuff too. A lot of competitions. Uh, a lot of people walked out with some really cool prizes. Um, you know, we had a lot of custom stuff ready to go. Jeff Ruby's donated generously some gift cards and Skyline. Um, you know, we had AJJ Cornhole made some custom Cincy Cornhole boards, St. Taddy's Day Cornhole. Scotty Cameron was, was there with, with a couple putters. He wasn't there, but, you know, they that, that was a prize. So a lot of people, you know, walked away with some cool stuff. And that's what I wanted it to be. The whole spirit of the event was a thank you, a, a gratitude event for the enthusiasm and you know, support that this fan base has, has given to, to their sister city in Indianapolis. So falling warehouse was the location of the event. How many people, how many, I, I know it was in the thousands, right? I mean, how many thousand people probably went through everything during the course of your day there? What was it? Noon to five, something like that. Five hours. I noon to five. I think we had about 2000 people ended up coming through. Yeah. Playing games. 438 got tatted. We were, our tattoo artists did such a good job that uh, we were able to take some walk-ins too, you know, and people just want, you know, felt the spirit of it and, and wanted to get tattooed. And a lot of people got their first tattoo, including me. Um, <laughs> and it was, it, it was just a fun, wholesome event, really, uh, you know, kind of in, kind of in a dead period of NFL, even though right. the NFL makes it a year long show, but um, so thankful, really glad that we pulled it off. Uh, just really wanted to do a good job and big, big thank you to the village of Marici, Matt Rini, who runs, the CincyHat.com for me, childhood best friend, does a fantastic job. And obviously his mother, Colleen, who has been the visionary of kind of changing the paradigm of, you know, how these adults are cared for. You know, people, John Q. Public has no idea how much work and how much coordination, how much effort goes into pulling something like this off. I mean, there's a massive undertaking, uh, you know, getting ready for, ne never mind the day of the event all the preparation, the protocols, everything, you know, leading up to it. It's like, man, it's a, it's a, it's a heck of a thing. And and for you guys to pull it off the way you did, you mentioned uh, you got tattooed courtesy of Joe Burrow. Tell us about that uh, story a little bit. So I wasn't going to get it. I was feeling the pressure. Uh, <laughs> obviously everyone wanted me to get it. I don't have any tattoos. I wasn't really kind of in my sphere at all to, to get a tattoo. Uh, and we were at free agency dinner with a couple of the new guys. Yep. And we were talking about the event because it is very unique. And, you know, I, I mentioned that I wanted to, if I was going to get the tattoo, I wanted to at least monetize it and raise some money for the village. Um, and I, I kind of threw out a number of 25 grand, like that would be 
enough for me to do it. Um, you know, whether we uh, do like a raffle or buy tickets at the event or whatever. Right. Uh, and Joey B just stood up, shook my hand, said, if you do it right now, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pledge 25 grand to the village and uh, locked it in right there. What a guy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'll tell you, the center quarterback relationship's a unique one. There's no question. Um, I, I was I roomed with Kenny Anderson for, geez, uh, eight of the 10 years I played with the team. And I played some center with injury. Uh, you know, I had to snap to the to the guy. So, I mean, uh, it is, it's a unique bond. I mean, you and Joe Burrow have that unique bond as well. Those, uh, those bonds, those friendships, man, they don't break. They don't. And there, there's a lot of interesting business dealings that go on in the back room of Jeff Ruby's. <laughs> no question. No question about that. I, there, there is, there's no doubt. Um, so you mentioned that you've been, you, Jeff Ruby's you were at dinner with some of the, some of the veteran uh, free agents that, uh, that you've signed. I mean, how, how about the job that the, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals have done and, and a couple of guys that they signed, you are very uh, intimately aware of their abilities. I mean, Trent Brown, this big old guy, I mean, you got Super Bowl, two Super Bowl rings with the New England Patriots. Trent Brown was a teammate of yours, a Super Bowl winner with the New England Patriots at all. Tell us about this big man. Well, this is going to be the biggest guy you've ever seen on a football field. I mean, he, he even, I mean, he's, he's taller than Orlando and bigger. So we, we have wow. the biggest tackle duo uh, maybe in history. I think maybe, you know, Ogden, Ogden and Orlando's dad back in the day probably right. would, right. would uh, rival that. But, I mean, this guy's a winner. I was so excited um, kind of when I started, you know, he hearing that, that this was a possibility. And I, I think he's going to be a huge huge factor to, to us winning games this year. I mean, he's a lockdown tackle. Um, he's a guy that I have a ton of respect for, a proven winner, and a guy that's going to come in and really fit into our offense well. He's a one-on-one -on -one specialist, and we ask our tackles to do a lot. Uh, we drop back more than any other team in the league. And with, with the two guys we got on the edge, um, I feel very confident that, you know, we're going to have a big year. Man, when you've got one-on-one -on -one erasers like that in pass protection – you know, we, we had that luxury with the great Anthony Munoz and no tight end, no chip, you know, just boom, eraser. Get those guys out in routes. They don't have to bother helping, you know, in protection and um, slide the line. Yeah, well, potentially you may still have to slide, but it's not because, you know, the tackle needs help out there. There's might be overloaded a little bit more inside or whatever the case may be. But, I mean, to have that kind of luxury and, uh, man, that's you're right. I mean, these two offensive tackles, they're, they're – uh, <laughs> They're the two biggest in captivity right now, known to man. I mean, it's it's just unbelievable. It is, and we got to do something. I mean, obviously, you know, I don't want to talk too much about 2023. Disappointment, missed the dance. Right. So everyone's hungry, a little bit angry, um, and ready to roll. And we got about two, two and a half weeks till we show up back to spring. I think everyone's planning to come. We're, you know, we're these guys, we have such a great team, you know, not only with the guys we have, but the guys we add are such, you know, good fits into our culture. I love spring because it's a time where everyone gets to be together without the pressure of gameplay. You know, you don't have that every week looming performance pressure. So, you know, we come in, come together, get some work done and get ready to go for a 2024 campaign that, you know, we have very high expectations of ourselves. You're looking at this offensive line that has four of the potential five starters that have won Super Bowls. You've won two. Uh, Big O, Orlando Brown won a Super Bowl with the Chiefs. You won Super Bowls with the, with the Patriots. Kappa won Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now Trent Brown with the Patriots, like yourself. Four Super Bowl winners in, up front in the offensive line. I mean, know what it takes at the highest possible level. I mean, how big is that? I think it's huge. Obviously, you know, we've proven we can do it. No one can ever say we couldn't do it. But one thing we have to do is come together as a, as a team here. Cincinnati, we've never done it. And, you know, I think one thing, instead of focusing, you know, on that overarching next February goal, let's focus on this spring. And then let's focus, you know, in camp, coming out of camp with a mentality to start strong. The last two years, we found ourselves in a deficit over the first four weeks of the season in a division that's hard to crawl back out of. You know, in 2022, we overcame it. 2023, we did not. And I think one thing that I'm really just stressing is just we need to start fast this year, 
put ourselves in a position to lead the pack of the division, lead the pack of the AFC and not be playing catch up and then, you know, get into the dance, let the chips fall where they may. And then it's, you know, one game at a time mentality. But, you know, for this year, I kind of want to, you know, I think since 2021, we've had a lot of Super Bowl talk and it's obviously a very uh, anticipated you know, goal of this entire city and fan base, because it is such a, you know, a big deal, but there's a lot of ball to be played. And there's a process that I think we may, you know, this year, 2024, let's take a step back, really enjoy the process, really dive in to the little things that we need to do to be successful, you know, not only in February, but in August, September, October, and then, you know, have that upward trajectory going into the playoffs, ready to go, and going after a championship. You know, it's interesting. I am a firm believer in the intermediary goals. You know, there's the pie in the sky goal, but along the way, set goals to reward yourself. You know, now you're climbing mm-hmm. the ladder of success, a rung at a time, and pretty soon you get into the apex. Forrest Gregg was the guy that showed me that. I mean, he came to the Bengals as a head coach after we had a couple of losing seasons, and he goes, he looks, I mean, you know, we're thinking, here's a guy that's talking to us, and he's on the podium, he's got Super Bowl rings on his fingers. The guy played for Vince Lombardi, it's like, here we go, Super Bowl, you know, and he gets up there and he goes, you know, uh, our first goal, man, is to have a non-losing season. You guys have had a couple losing seasons, man. Our goal is to have a non-losing season, eight, 16 games then, eight and eight, you know. So we're like looking at each other like, what? Forrest Greg, Super Bowl champion, what the heck? I mean, we, we got to gotta have a better. So we hit that, we get our eighth win. We go on a six-game winning streak, get our eighth win pretty early in the season. And he goes, hey, congratulations. He puts a check mark next to non-losing season. He goes, okay, now if you get a win next week, you're guaranteed a winning season. We get it, boop, check mark. Okay, here's the next goal, double-digit winning season. Boop, check mark. Okay, here's the next goal. Win the division, automatic playoff contender. Boop, uh, automatic playoff qualifier. Boop, check that off. Win a playoff game. Franchise has never won a playoff game in franchise history, men. Why don't you be the first ones to do it? Boom. Win a playoff game. Win the AFC championship, men. This franchise now won it. Boop. Win the AFC championship. Final goal. Win Super Bowl 16. Don't get it. But don't get the ultimate goal. But man, you're rewarding yourself along the way and you start you start to feel really good about what you're doing. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. I mean and that's you know, that's kind of what our focus on here in 2024. Really not even thinking about the season yet. Let's think about having a good, healthy, spring, productive you know, coming together as a team. I think that's one of our strengths is the camaraderie. Um, And one, you know, one of my favorite parts of football is the companionship of the field. And, you know, we need to, we need to nurture that and continue to grow that because nothing we've done the last two years counts and everything starts over. Everyone has the same goal in this entire league and an extremely competitive, you know, cutthroat league. So, We need to do whatever we can this spring to distinguish ourselves um, as leaders of the pack. And, you you know, you're not even going to be able to see that. And we just have to know, you know, we're doing the right things, coming together, working hard and putting ourselves in a position to have a good summer, start camp ready to go. And when, you know, September, I don't even know, September 10th, usually first week of September, second week of September, let's be ready to go. That's, you know, that's what we're thinking about. Man, it gets me fired. The hair on the back of my neck starts to stand up when we talk about this with guys like you because, man, there is nothing. I mean, (laughs) coaches would say, you know, that uh, had played in the league and got into coaching. It's like, man, there's nothing like playing. You're never going to find anything that gives you everything that playing the game of football gives you, you know, and uh, not just to get playing the game, but the camaraderie and the family, all of that. Mm. And, boy, they were so right, you know. And, I, I mean, when you're in that huddle, you know, and it's like, all right, here's here's we got to make this play to win the Super Bowl. And you look in everybody's eyes, and everybody's all in. And it's not about you; it's about you don't want you don't want to be the one to let your teammate down. It's about us. It's about every. There's nothing like that. There's not a business out there that you can get into that is like that. I mean, there, I'll just never forget looking in guys' eyes in important times of games and just having that feeling like, man, this dude's gonna bust his ass to make sure that. This works, and I'm going to do the same thing. There's nothing like that. What a privilege it is, and I never take it for granted to to go out and do something, you know, really hard against guys who are doing it against you, 
Um, but to do it with men you love and respect and are counting on and they're counting on you. Um, it's, it's a privilege of a lifetime. And, you know, we, we have the guys that can do it. And we have such a good group that it, it's fun coming to work every day in Cincinnati. And I think some of these free agents have seen that and wanted to join up obviously number nine, you know, you want to play with nine too, but we have, yeah. you know, a credit to, to Duke and, and Mr. Brown uh, and the Blackburn family and, and Steve Radicevitz for putting together such a roster of quality young men. Um, you know, as the oldest guy on the team now going on two years, um, it, we really have such great people from top to bottom in this building, but our roster especially is just filled with guys who want to do the right thing and win and do right for each other and for this city and for this organization. So tell me about another guy that you played with when you were with the Miami Dolphins, Dolphins, Mike Kosicki. Uh, this guy is, he's got a skill set, man. 6'6 six, six plus, runs routes like a receiver. I mean, you know, real violent at the top of routes, it looks like, tremendous hands. What a weapon this dude looks like. I think him and Joe are going to hit it off big time. I mean, Mike, Mike is, a, you know, looks like a basketball player and has has played like it throughout his career. I mean, I, I had such a great time with him in Miami. He's become one of my, you know, core friend teammates. Um, you know, was, was really excited when we signed him. He was at the at the tatted Ruby's dinner and, you know, I'm glad we, you know, we took him out and showed him, you know, you know what Cincinnati's about a little bit, but I think, you know, Joe's going to love him. Such a big catch radius. He, I mean, he's a he's a huge person and, and a high energy guy. That's another thing that, you know, this organization brings in a lot of high energy, high character guys who are ready to go. And, and Mike is a guy who's going to, who's going to bring a lot of fun to this team, but also make a lot of big plays. And I've been, I've been on both ends. He's made a lot of big plays for me on my team. And he's a lot of, made a lot of big plays against me uh, when we were in new England and he was a young guy in Miami. So, um, you know, he's putting the stripes on this year and we need a lot more of those big plays. Talk about big. How about uh, on the other side of the football <clears throat> interior <coughs> lineman that you'll be working against uh, and with, you know, at, at training camp as you uh, guys get ready, both sides of the ball, particularly, you know, the the offensive and defensive lineman. I mean, it, it gets competitive. I mean, that's that's just life in the NFL, uh, even at training camp practices. And Sheldon Rankins, man, he brings some skill set to the table, doesn't he? He does. He's a guy I have a ton of respect for. I've played against him. Uh, I mean, he's on the Saints, he's on the Jets, um, he's been a, in the Texans. I mean, he's been a big time contributor for a long time. I don't know if we're the same draft class. We're, we're one or two years apart or maybe the same age, but, you know, I, he's been on, you know, he's been in my notebook a lot a, as a player, you know, with film study. And yeah. I think he brings a certain explosiveness inside um, that is really going to help our defense. I know Lou is going to scheme up some things for him and get him in positions to make a play. And I'm very glad he's on our team. I've always been against him. Um, but now we get to team up and, and hopefully do some good against uh, all our opponents. Sheldon Rankins, Trey Hendrickson played together with the Saints. Von Bell was a teammate mm -hmm. as well. Von Bell's back now. I mean, those three players were big, big contributors, big, big factors in the Saints defensive football teams that uh, went to those playoffs, you know, you had a good quarterback in Drew Brees, but you had to be good on the other side of the football as well. And for those three to have played together and have a history together and now come to the Bengals defensively, that's going to help Lou and Arumo on that side of the ball too, right? It is. I mean, I think Vaughn coming back, what a what a huge signing to get back. Such a, you know, not only a fantastic player, but a huge leader who sets sets the tone and has, you know, is a very verbal leader too, to especially young guys on defense. And, you know, I don't have a lot of context. I've never, I haven't played defense since I was a senior in high school. Um, and it's obviously a little bit different yeah. um, you know, than an offensive leadership mentality. And Vaughn's one of the best I've ever seen at that. So I think it's extremely valuable that he's back. He's such a, you know, a big time guy for us, a huge, I mean, he's a friend to everyone and a guy that's going to come in um, and, and get our defense to where it needs to be. Talk about uh, some of your own uh, free agents that have signed a couple of guys. Cody Ford, you know, gets an extension. I mean, he's he's a guy that you're obviously uh, very aware of as a person and a player. How, how big was uh, getting Cody Ford uh, to sign a contract? Well, I think it's much deserving. I mean, Cody Cody came in uh, a few times this year and did and did an excellent job. Can play guard and tackle, yep. uh, which is very valuable for us. 
um, a guy that fits fits well into our culture. And again, another high energy guy always knows what's to, what to do and how to do it. Um, and I, I was really happy for him that, you know, he gets to come back and we get to get to run it back with him. That's awesome. And then how about uh, Jake Browning gets the exclusive rights tender. I'm telling you, Ted, your quarterback room. <laughs> I mean, Jake Browning proved that he is a, a starting caliber quarterback in the National Football League. The two quarterbacks that are the leaders in that quarterback room, uh, you know, the Killer Bees, Burrow and Browning, that's that's as good as there is in the National Football League. Let's face it. It is. And I, everyone, I mean, I was so happy for Jake, so proud of him. I mean, he came in and, and, you know, we just missed the dance. So, you know, I wanted to obviously make it, but, man, he did such a great job for us, winning some big games. That Minnesota game, uh, as big as it gets with the season on the line. And, you know, it, this has been a couple-year process. He's earned the respect of his teammates through the way he practices and prepares. But then to be able to take advantage of an opportunity and show the outside world, you know, who he is, what he's about, and the talent level that he brings to the quarterback position, um, I think has set himself up for – um, you know, a nice long career. Obviously, we don't really want to see him this year. Um, just let's let's get nine back in there. You know, that's just the nature of the quarterback position. Right. Um, but you know, to have a guy like that uh, kind of in your in your back pocket is very valuable to this team. And then the moves that were made at the running back position. Joe Mixon he gave the city of Cincinnati all he had and uh, did it very well, as well as it could be uh, expected out of a guy for a number of years, he's traded to the Houston Texans and uh, you get a guy, Zach Moss, who's played in Buffalo and Indianapolis and his running style seems to fit the inside outside zone gap scheme that, you know, Frank Pollock wants, Frank Pollock wants you guys to execute so well. And if you also just said from an O-line perspective, uh, go, go toss on his pass protects and highlights. I mean, he, He's a fantastic pass protector. Yep. Um, will fit right in with the fluidity of our protection schemes. Yep. And, you know, he was a he was a really impressive guy. I, I sat right next to him at dinner. I had a great conversation with him. Um, he has a great family, and he's a guy that another – just a high-quality uh, young man um, to, to be on our side in our uniform. Um, you know, you, you can't get – you can't have too many of those. So very excited for him. I'm um, excited to, you know, talk some Indianapolis with him uh, just because he was there for a few years, you know. Um, but, you know, really, really a great job by Duke, Duke and his staff, um, you know, bringing in guys that are going to be big time contributors, not only to uh, football performance, but also, you know, the culture and integrity of our football club. And uh, Geno Stone, you take from a division rival. I mean, he led the AFC interception second in the NFL. He was, he was a, a huge nuisance back there, you know, a thorn in everybody's side in the in the AFC North, and now he's a Bengal. Geno Stone's going to add a bunch, isn't he? He is. Um, I'm glad to see contributors leaving the Baltimore Ravens. Yes. Um, there's a few guys, you know, Clowney's out too. Um, yep. But, you know, they have they have really talented guys. They do a good job too over there. And um, obviously they beat us, beat us twice this year, which is eats away at me late at night. So, um you know, glad to have him on our team. It's always, you know, divisions uh, in, in the NFL uh, always pick from each other. And there's a lot of, you know, I I barely made it out of the AFC East um, after being in that for six years. So glad to be in the AFC North. I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, transactions between these teams and very glad to have a proven winner, a guy who, um, you know, has been in a great, great culture over there in Baltimore and ready to contribute for us. You mentioned uh, Duke and, and his staff uh, multiple times during the course of our conversation here, and they are extraordinary. They've done a hell of a job and uh, and really addressed perceived holes, you know, uh, in in the roster. You know, get that get that tackle. Make sure the running back uh, position is is solidified. An interior uh, defensive lineman, safeties on the back end. I mean, they they've addressed a lot of things. So now you can go into the draft, and I know you a guy that follows everything about football, the draft included, you're not drafting to fill a need. You know, now they've got 10 draft picks after the Joe Mixon trade. That makes number 10. I mean, they've got capital to move up in rounds, you know, and, and if, if so desired, or, you know, just make the pick and take 10 draft choices and take the best available player. You don't have to try to reach to fill a need. That's a, that's a heck of a deal too for the Bengals. It is. And I think, you know, the biggest thing with that going into the draft is, 
you know, you don't want to pencil in a guy and have to rely on a rookie, rely on a 21 year old, you know, in the National Football League. It's going to be great uh, if rookies contribute. Uh, and I've seen a lot of great rookies. I contributed as a rookie a little bit. And, and a lot of my people that I, I know and highly respect have. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this, this is a grown man's league. And, you know, they don't even know what they don't know. And, you know, I am excited. I love working with the rookies every year and helping these guys out. I, I had such great veterans that helped me out and show me the ropes. But, you know, it, it takes you a while to get, you know, to being a quality NFL player, I would say. And, you know, to go into the draft with nothing that, you know, we're saying oh, a rookie has to fill this spot uh, is a big advantage for, for, for us. No doubt. I mean, you know, you've got guys that are signed one-year contracts, two-year contracts. Given that bridge time opportunity like you're talking about, you don't have to hurry it. If it unfolds that way, so be it. I mean, that's all good, too, because now you have depth. Either way, you've got quality depth, you know, at, uh, at respective positions uh, up and down the board with the, uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals football team. There's, you, can't, you can't be uh, thankful <laughs> enough for that. I mean, they, they've done a heck of a job constructing roster. And, and you mentioned a few times, Ted, a few times, Ted, the character, the culture of this football team, it is amazing. And, and you're, you're, you are right at the top of Mount Rushmore in that regard. How – pleasurable is it that you know during the course of the season there's going to be things that crop up you know minor things but nothing where oh my god this guy's a jerk and every single day he's a jerk and we have to deal with this thing every single day how how much of a relief is that that you don't have to deal with that and you can concentrate on football it's a huge relief and i think one of the things that you know really drives this team is a lot of the guys internalize you know how am i adding value to this organization not only with football performance, but how am I adding value in conversations at lunch? How am I helping my teammates? Am I giving someone a ride home? And, you know, the cool thing about the NFL really overall, I, I've been very lucky with the teams I've been on, but, you know, guys that cause a lot of problems, you know, don't last very long because right. it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time and a waste of energy. And we really energy and time that you don't have to spare because people are coming to take your lunch. And if you're if we're focusing on some guys, you know, and obviously there's personal issues, you know, we're human beings and stuff. Right. But, you know, the, really one thing I've always tried to do in my personal career is just just no no repeat misses, no repeat errors. Um, you know, maybe you have a bad day, but n next day, you know, come back ready to go. And I think the guys we have on this team have really bought into the fact that how am I adding value to the Cincinnati organization? in a day in and day out basis. And, you know, being a former offensive lineman, I do, I do appreciate uh, the relationships that all you guys have built. I mean, you guys, that it is a tight group, man. And I played with some offensive lines that, that had had that like you guys do. And man, it's like, you can't put a value on that. There is no price tag on that. It's that that's gonna, that's gonna take you such a long way. And it's so enjoyable and pleasurable for me to see how you guys interact and not just you know with each other but then that just that's contagious man that spills over to other position groups and you i think you guys are the core of it all man i, re I really do i think the uh you know er every one of you guys are solid solid citizens you know just high character people and man you got a heck, heck of a culture going in that old line man well thank you yeah we got to have a big year and we got to play to it and at, at the end of the day as good of a person as you are uh, and everything you do, this is a performance business and we need to perform at our highest level. And that's what we're striving to do every day. That's, that's so true. I remember Force Greg was a guy that didn't pull any punches uh, and uh, a teammate uh, that, that I talked to. How was your, how was your meeting with Force Greg? Uh, he's, he's, he's a brutally honest guy, man. He looked at me and said, you know, you're, you're a great guy. You're, you're doing everything. We, we, you know, you're trying to do everything we want you to do, but you just can't do it, you know? And I, I feel badly. That's, you know, that, that's too bad. I'm going to have to move on without you. I was like, Oh boy, you know, but that you're right. It is, it's a, uh, it's a performance based business. Always has been, always will be. And that's what makes it so special. Yep. It's the equity you have in this league is what you earn. Love it. We're going to end it right there. 
that is a, that is sage sound advice from Ted Karras. Great player, great leader, great humanitarian, super person. Appreciate your time as always. Have uh, the best off season you ever had, my man. Thank you, Dave. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.